Today's actually my 12 year anniversary of joining Twitter. Hey, congratulations. This is an even bigger event than your birthday. 12 years? I know. When did you, what year did you join? 20, wait, sorry, I'm retarded. (laughs) Sorry. 2001? Eve of my 20th birthday. Wait, that's not, 2000. 11 11 sorry oh my god, god we are so stupid <gasps> i was radicalized by these racist right-wing pro anna influencers I'm like, what's and i'm like 23 boop, we can't even count what's 23 minus 12 my dad's a world famous mathematician i can't do basic math i can't do basic math. i need men to calculate the tip for me they're like here's a trick you take 10 percent and you double it yeah and i'm just like what's that <laughs> huh <laughs> But that's why I'm such a good tipper, not because I'm such a good person, but because no, I'm, like I, I'm nervous and bad at yeah, math. I'm, like, I'm just like overpaid. Yeah, here's- but no, it was 2011. Joined Twitter and I tweeted. I was watching the slam dunk contest and I <laughs> tweeted slam drunk contest. <laughs> Cut to 12 years later, mm. brain damage, personality disorder, <laughs> dopamine disruption. <sighs> it's been a wild ride. The years just flew by. <laughs> I know remember. people are like, there's um, toxic chemicals <clears throat> and known carcinogens being expelled into the air. I'm like, I've water been on Twitter and soil. for 12 years. <laughs> and I'm just like, we're hunched over our phones in that unhealthy dopamine disturbing blue light that literally gives you acne and a mood disorder physically makes you warped and ugly and you know you're getting a brain tumor from like holding the phone within the vicinity of your head yeah i finally gave in and matthew gave me some airpods (laughs) (laughs) i dropped them twice (laughs) walking around the city on the the disgusting polluted street put them right back in my ears (laughs) seeping into my brain Plus the 5G. I don't even want to know about the 5G. I know. Anna. That's what I'm saying. I don't even want to. I'm going to dox myself again, but there's a tower on my block. According to official sources, incredible experts, no. it's to provide low cost or free internet to vulnerable populations and marginalized communities. Huh? What do they need to go on the I, internet for? That's what I'm saying. They're not applying for any jobs on the internet. They're not in a group chat. They're not in a racist group chat <laughs> the streets are their group chat <laughs> they're with their boys on the I, block we, should, we need to time stamp this because it has to go on uh red scare hot takes and you know they're shooting each other over twitter tier beefs <laughs> yeah i was thinking about this when when the shooting occurred i was like man this is like if sam mckinnis and i went and shot each other over Sam McInnes again? The artist guy. Oh, right. Who came for me when I was banned. Oh, that was so low. It was barbaric and uncivilized, but guess what? Mm-hmm. I'm a Christian. I'm <laughs> turning the other cheek. That was a bad beef, yeah. But imagine if we took it to the streets and actually shot each other. Respect. <laughs> <laughs> mm mm mm. I am feeling brazen and emboldened. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, Anna. It's like all the uh, the bullying videos I keep uh, yeah, algorithmically I was, I was being pwned. Yeah. fed to me by my For I, You tab. I know. Toxic, dude. I know. It, it really is like... If you're looking at the For You Water tab, park minority crime porn, like that guy yelling at the child on the subway. That one. <sighs> there was one I watched today of like a German girl mm-hmm. getting bullied by like... I guess it was implied that they were some kind of like Muslim teenage girls, but they seemed German. Mm -hmm. They just had like black hair. They're Turkish. I didn't understand what was going on, but they were like kind of slapping her in the face and she was like sobbing and like (laughs) hyperventilating and like I'm so desensitized to like American school violence. Yeah. But I was like, whatever. (laughs) It's like that time like, Andrew kids- Tate choked that girl out with a belt and she was like, no, we're just friends. <laughs> I was like, um, kids are cruel. I'm going to be real with you. When I see those videos on Twitter, it really brings out the libtard in me. Guys, come on. This is an isolated incident. I've had my car broken into so many times. And while it really did affect my financial bottom line, it did not leave me emotionally traumatized. <laughs> I don't like them. 
Oh, I hate them. They're horrible. They are spiking my, my cortisol. But I also am with you in that I'm kind of school's tough. Like <laughs> kids be getting in like gladiator style battles. <laughs> I'm kind of like, it's not a new thing. Like, what? It's like kids wailing on each other. Yeah. Right? They've always done it. And it's like, I'm very unpleasant to see. Mm hmm. There was a while during like the pandemic where it felt like a big motif. Violent viral videos was old people mm-hmm. getting like pushed down or wailed on by like mental patients and like COVID hospitals. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> the elder abuse somehow the, the mm-hmm. was really upsetting me. But the kids, I'm kind of like they'll be fine. It builds character. But I imagine a lot of people who maybe were bullied themselves. It really hits all the right buttons for them. Yeah, I'm sympathetic to the overall point, but I just am wary of any viral displays that reinforce people's confirmation bias. It feels emotionally manipulative. Yeah, because no one likes to see violence. That's not true, but <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a hot button to press. Mm-hmm. That really gets people's passions f- flared up. Yeah, I'm literally experiencing a physiological response right now, thinking about all the, the horrible vids I've seen on Twitter. Can I ask you some questions about uh, sure. race? Absolutely. Because you got, so you caught some heat recently for a pair of tweets. Your tweets were, um, the word blacks is trending on Twitter right now. It's, it's nothing but random videos of assaults conditioning viewers to draw <laughs> negative conclusions about an entire racial group based on the worst representations. This is reprehensible and Twitter is devolving into so- something dark, which I agree with minus the part about devolving. I think Twitter was always think, kind but, of dark. But, but the but algorithm been, didn't always just force yeah, that boost, into your yeah. timeline. I didn't have a timeline like that. But I think no, it's because of either. Elon, because yeah, no, because he kind of cracked down on um, the banning of um, right wing accounts. He did, but see, I was talking to some engineers who used to work at Twitter, and they were saying they don't even think it's like strategic, like that. They think no, it's no, like no. I believe he that. just cut costs to the point where there he, is he no, there women. are no guardrails. No one's working there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just like, you know what I'm saying, like. Uh, that's coming over time late, not because he planned yeah, to yeah. like Actually, promote free women speech. are essential workers. Um, <laughs> and then the second one was the algorithmic race baiting online is extremely unhealthy and boosts edge cases to appear more representative than they are in real life. I almost never see black crime or white supremacy. Um, both exist, but most people are, are um, decent. And I agree with that too. I mean, I live in a area where I see a lot of black crime and it's increased since the pandemic, since the, um, the racial reckoning but even so your point stands like most people are like basically friendly law-abiding decent and we are talking about edge cases the latest video that was trending was um this you know black teen robber who followed this asian single mother of three home and like bodied her on the sidewalk Mm. left her paralyzed from the waist down and people are like having a field day with this one it feels like a really kind of like dark and shitty moment yeah but the far right would argue that the reason that these videos exist in the first place is because young black males are committing the vast majority of violent crime. So how do you recon- mm. reconcile those two viewpoints? Well, this is where I feel like the horseshoe theory is always correct. That's the same thing that the far left says about the unrepresentativeness of police mm-hmm. brutality videos. It's, right. mm-hmm. And both have a point. It's like these things really exist, but... When you get them in your timeline and they're so visible, it looks as though that's the only, only thing. That's yes, going on. it's and rage. It's like, yeah. Yes, yeah. this happens, but there are 330 million people in this country. 44 million of them are black. People almost never get killed by police. People almost never get body slammed. But it, you have this feeling that is more representative than it is, and so I think it's actually a rhetoric that the left uses about police shootings, which I've argued for years are horrific. My brother's been a police uh, brutality victim, had his teeth s- smashed out of his mm-hmm. mouth in my dad's driveway by a flashlight mm-hmm. that a cop was wielding. I-, I don't doubt that police violence exists, but the numbers that they use to say that that's an epidemic of violence mm-hmm. are statistically almost zero mm-hmm. In, mm-hmm. in a nation of this size, mm-hmm. even though it's worse than in 
similarly wealthy countries. Yeah. So, and, and I think that's the same thing about black crime. It's, you know, and then you never get the real conversations about class mm-hmm. and about what does it mean to say that a group of people based on racial characteristics behave a certain way and mm-hmm. you're not talking about socioeconomic factors mm-hmm. that mean something and why certain people are poor. And I'm the farthest thing you can be from woke, but some of the far right talking points are driving me crazy right now. <laughs> I just think that it, there's no good that comes out of like Marjorie Taylor Greene well, like rage baiting a snuff people, film yeah, yeah. of a black criminal yeah. getting killed trying it, to it, rob a bodega. It's a snuff a video. film. Well, you, there's racism porn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's and literally like titillating you like porn. Especially yeah. with the emphasis on children and, and bullying, I think especially really mm-hmm. triggers people. They always share these videos of like two black girls ganging up on a white girl. Mm-hmm. And to what end? I don't understand. Most people actually do want to make this multi-ethnic society work better. If you ever spend time around black mm-hmm. people, they don't want that violence around them at okay, all. Well, they're very actually conservative in they a are. way. Yeah. You know that. Isn't there a case to be made that race relations in this country were better prior to 2012 when yeah, they, I mean, when they I turned think... the racism machine <laughs> Yeah, they like ratcheted. Yeah. I went to college in Oakland, California, and I've been a, a victim of black crime really? myself. Yeah. No way. Oh, yeah. No, I've been mugged. Twi- I got mugged twice in one year. Okay, yeah, but I got yeah, ghosted yeah. by a black guy once. <laughs> so that's why I'm racist. Uh, what? But even when I was like living in really bad neighborhoods getting like mugged constantly <laughs> the l- level of like racialized violence that i'm exposed to on my feed right it, it feels, feels weird extreme. Right? you're from las vegas right i'm from las vegas i mean that's also yeah. like a tough town actually isn't it that has a tough side doesn't it yeah for with, sure with gangs and stuff i don't want to minimize what it means to be mugged or how that scars you but to draw conclusions about 44 million people that's the size of spain to say that all Spaniards behave a certain way is really crazy. It was more of like a fact of my life of being like, it didn't feel even that like racialized to me. And now it Well, I grew up like around like ethnic white crime. Italian well, Americans Jersey. were committing crimes where I grew up. It feels like the, the videos are really just polarizing. I mean, my first book is about how culture impacts the way you perform racial authenticity. Mm-hmm. I'm no denier that culture matters and it's not all structures and socioeconomics yeah and i feel like your position has always been like a very classically liberal one trying to be it's Which hard is, out here you know, right and that's what dasha was getting at when she said prior to 2012 there was a sweet spot moment like yeah 2007 like to 2012, 2012 like, is like the era i want to stay in mm-hmm. both white and because black people music. prior to that were like i think it was like 70 percent would characterize race relations as like basically good and really wanted to believe and this is part of the disappointment i'm trying to write a book about 2020 and Uh what led up to it and why that was a moment and one of the things is the the real disappointment that happened after like the promise of obama didn't actually like live up and it couldn't have obviously one person's presidential campaign can't heal a country but there was a moment when people really believed or wanted to believe or were willing to try to believe that it was going to get better in a way Mm -hmm. and a lot of people who ended up voting for Mitt Romney or even Donald Trump did vote for Obama because they were really trying to buy into that but I don't even think it's a question of like or wanting something to get better I think like like your and my particular pain is that we're from New Jersey and so like we grew up in the era of like positive race relations where everybody got along and it was very diverse and there was none of this like simmering seething tension but it seems like a lot of things were were better i mean the quality of goods and services were better. <laughs> that's my big like, b this is the thing i see the um argument of the far right because basically they're claiming that it's not so much that um they're racist it's that they're n- i mean they'll admit to it's being racist they're but, the, but they're, they're noticing they're observing right. out of like a frustration there and the thing is that the left allows them to have a point which is that there really is gaslighting all over the place yes mm-hmm. there really are lies in so, yeah, like, all types of media mm-hmm. outlets about how things really are like, and not just about crime i mean about how dangerous it is in America to not be white. For, there's a denial of how diverse a society already is. And we still talk as though there's a white black binary and uh-huh. we ignore all of the complexity. And there's an erasure mm-hmm. of how hard it's gotten for like white people, specifically poor white men, like all of this. So like, how do you even begin to achieve the sort of society that like you or McWhorter wants when everything is so racialized 
And it's not just coming from the far right. It's also coming from the left and the center who are as equally obsessed with race, frankly, Mm -hmm. as the far right, though they'll never cop to it. Well, they do. Like, an Ibram X. Kendi does cop to putting race at the center of everything. I think you can't defeat a debilitating doubling down and clinging to racial categories by tripling down and clinging to racial categories. Mm -hmm. You actually, at some point, someone has to move first and has to try to let go of the old categories that we've inherited and move Mm -hmm. into something new. And the left isn't actually, many on the left, on the identity left, is not letting go of racial categories. And so that actually provides the opponent that the right needs Mm -hmm. and keeps the thing going. And if you're in the center trying to move forward, you get devoured on both sides Mm -hmm. by people who, who, who won't let this stuff go.